Good afternoon, dear parents. Welcome to the Premier Schools Exhibitions. Like always, it's a matter of great privilege uh, for us at Affairs to host this uh, Premier Schools Exhibition, which is most sought after event uh, in, in parents' calendar. So this is happening today and tomorrow, covering the Gurgaon market, helping the Gurgaon parents to choose the right school for their child. And now, uh, as a part of uh, this event, a series of webinars which we are conducting now, so this is a second session of the day, which is being hosted by Affairs Exhibitions and Media, which will which is running con concurrently with the exhibition. And the topic of the session is on understanding different education boards in India. Now the perspective of IB, Cambridge, ICSC and CBSC schools will be discussed here. So we have a renowned uh, uh, distinguished panelist here, and uh, we will start the session uh, uh, first uh, with Mr. Shubhash Kumar and a uh, few more speakers are joining uh, shortly. Uh, so please uh, wait and enjoy the sessions. So there's a Q&A box which you will see on the, on, on the screen uh, at the bottom. So you can put your questions there in case if you want to have uh, interaction, want to pose your questions, you can put this. Our team will uh, put the, your questions uh, to, this, to the panel and we would ensure that those query which you have should be answered here. So uh, let me have the honor of, uh, of introducing uh, uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar. And uh, sir is a distinguished educationist, has worked in various uh, capacities at different leadership positions in schools like Torian World School, Ranchi, Candid International School, Bangalore, NH Goel World School, Raipur, BK Birla Center for Education, Pune, as well as Peeves Public School, Kerala. He has, he has, he has, uh, he's an accomplished uh, educationist having a great expertise, not only on the national curriculum, but also on international curriculum of IB and Cambridge. So thank you so much for joining uh, this session and thank you for sparing your time and uh, attending the Premier Schools exhibition series, webinar series, sir. So my first request to you, my first uh, uh, request to you is if you can give an overview to the parents who are attending this session, on firstly, on the international curriculums, how many international curriculums are there in India and vis-a-vis -vis the national curriculum, which is CBSC and ICSC. So getting you know a fair overview of these curriculums, then I have set up some questions, which I would love to ask you and take your response. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Vivek. A very good evening to all the parents and good evening to Vivek too. And all the panelists, those who are in absentia, a very good evening to them also. Uh, coming back to the question of Vivek, in India, we have uh, various boards, very uh, pertinent. And uh, the most importantly, uh, see what has happened. Uh, I was associated with uh, international uh, curriculum right from 1997-96 when I was in the Chinma International Residence School, when we had only four IP schools in the country. And the nearest school which uh, I used to visit was Kodai International School in Kodai Canal where they had uh, IB also, Kodai Diploma, and so many other curriculums they are following. Presently, the most widely accepted and uh, well-known curriculum in our country, international, is uh, one is the CIE, Cambridge International School, and the most prominently accepted throughout the world, along with CIE, is IB. And the other two national boards, which is very prevalent in India, it is uh, CBC School and ICC Schools. Uh, they are two prominent boards. As you all must be aware that ICAC, I and IAC prior, it was known as Cambridge School till 1972-73. It was international. Uh, it was a, a curriculum which was known as uh, Cambridge. The Cambridge which we are talking about, CIE, it is a different curriculum which came much later. And IB for Asia Pacific, the, the head office is Singapore. And uh, the assessment of IB is done at Cardiff. And similarly, for CIE, the United Kingdom uh, is a place where it originated and it has taken a wider shape. And it has come very much nicely parallel to the national boards also because they have done a lot of changes in terms of uh, the content, in terms of the examination, in terms of assessment. The Cambridge has come up very well in the country. But IB, undoubtedly, those uh, who know about IB, that IB is a curriculum with a lot of content and the variety and various tools are being followed where uh, it is primarily focused on child-centric learning. 
and uh, it is mostly accepted throughout the world and you get a credit also for ib admissions in various parts of the world so i feel that ib has an upper edge because it not only talks about the content it also talks about the rich process of transacting the curriculum where even if a science student or humanities student they need to have an ib diploma they have to go for society uh, subjects like history higher level uh, standard level where you have to have uh, 240 hours of study and 150 hours of study in standard levels and it is also the cas is a very common prominent where we talk about the societal uh, changes and the societal responsibilities which children must be imparted and impacted in order to see that they get a wider perspective of learning and they become a people of uh, making a change in the society because change is something which is inevitable and ib focuses on one important aspect that how the children are exposed to the society for taking up the responsibility of making a change and though through that process they become a lifelong learner and they also have experimental sciences whether you study humanity you study management so you go for experimental sciences also even if you are not a student of science you need to go for subjects experimental subject one subject and uh, the languages part plays a very significant role of higher level or standard level and uh, the foreign languages of uh, national level like for example each country they have a language which is being put forth for ib for example hindi is a language urdu is a language and uh, people th those who can take a choice french ab initio is there and so i personally feel that ib plays a very significant role in molding the children of future where they become a truly global citizen and the national curriculum also the cbsc and I icsc they have come up very well now the what uh, ib was doing much much earlier many years ago now cbsc has also incorporated the school so it is not the curriculum which matters the tools of learning who is transacting the lesson how far and how well the teachers are exposed that plays a very significant role for a parent to choose a board uh, i personally feel whether you talk about ib or cie or national board or state board it depends upon how the lesson is being transacted cbc is not an impediment when you are talking about science and technology or society and individual or uh, languages it all depends upon how as a teacher i do provide a child centric approach of that so this is basically to start with where we talk about uh, how magnanimous we are in order to transact a lesson how well we are using the tools of learning how we are using the assessment that keeps the child in the center how are we using the gradient based evaluation uh, which is the prominent the key of the internal assessment of ib and cie and even uh, the national boards have taken up very well so i personally feel all boards are nice but it depends upon how well the lessons take us over to vivek to thank take you. the thank you dr subhash kumar thank you very so parents so uh, i have the privilege of inviting uh, dr neeta bali here thanks ma'am for joining in thank you so much for coming and uh, attending this session uh, let me have the privilege of introducing uh, dr bali though she doesn't need any introduction she is a very well known educationist uh, all across india and uh, still as a ritual this is i have got the honor of uh, having dr bali so let me introduce dr bali in short so dr bali she is a seasoned educator having over 30 year 38 years of experience in the education field she has she has and continues to serve well reputed institutions during this time dr bali started her career as a head of department matter day school delhi english for 18 years as a vice principal a pj school noida for 6 years headed gd goinga world school sona as director principal for 6 years Kasiga School Dehradun for two years and briefly served Purdar International School, Powai, Mumbai. As of date, she is serving a second stint at Director Principal and Head of School of Jidi Goenka World School in Sona, Haryana. So Dr. Bali also specializes in teaching subjects such as English language, psychology and career. Along with that, she has expertise in psychological counseling and a trained career counselor. An eloquent speaker and trainer, she is a frequently invited guest speaker at various prominent educational conferences conferences throughout the country ma'am is such a great honor having you here thank you so much for coming and attending this session ma'am am i audible to you
Ma'am, am I audible to you? I think ma'am got disconnected. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm so sorry, parents. I think this bit of uh, uh, technical snag, uh, which uh, on the other side, uh, Dr. Neeta Bali, she's facing. Uh, in the meantime, I'll request uh, uh, Mr. Sh Dr. Shubhash Kumar <coughs> to cover some more aspects. Uh, you know, she, he was talking about uh, of uh, national curriculum as well, right? So some, some, some finder, or if you want some questions, you know, which I can put across okay, accordingly, what are the key advantages? What do you see in the CBSC board as compared to other boards in India? So, you know, we, you have given an overview of international curriculum. You have given an overview of national curriculum, but since national curriculum, there are a lot many state boards are there as well as ICSC and CBSC boards are there. So any key five or four or five advantages, which you see, you know, uh, you know advantages of CBSC board as compared to other boards. See, uh, CBC board, uh, as I told you earlier also, it has taken a lot of content, the processes of IB and uh, CIA and other international curriculum. Uh, keeping uh, the national curriculum framework in mind, uh, I'm not talking about NCF 2005 or I'm not talking about any pedagogical uh, situations as far as uh, the national board is concerned. See, what happens uh, generally when we talk about CBC and ICSE? In our country, Still, uh, the prevalence of uh, joining the competitive exams are very high in uh, system. Whether one would like to go for JEE or one, one would like to go for AIPNT or uh, uh, advanced or uh, NDA and all those kind of things. So basically, what happens? Uh, the people, those who like to study and face the competitions in India, uh, since the curriculum and the question paper setters are on based on the NCRT guidelines, so. Uh, definitely, when you talk about uh, competition at the national level, the content which is being prescribed by CBSC, uh, all these exams like NTA and national uh, the talent admission exams are there. So uh, you are tuned to that and the process of the curriculum and the transaction and the testing modules, apart from the multiple choice questions, which is also now coming up in 10th class and 12th class in the uh, post pandemic. So that uh, will also be helping the students to go for a multiple choice questions. So I personally feel that uh, the national board, uh, if you are facing competitions in India, uh, keeping the content uh, parallel in mind, the CBC and even an ICSE after the upgradation of the curriculum, they stand a fairly good chance. But here I would like to also undermine that when we talk about IB or CIE, it doesn't mean that those who are appearing for CB, so IB or CIE, they are not uh, fit for uh, competitive exams like that. No because they also have a content which is wider in perspective, only thing is that they need to customize the process of uh, participating in the competition. But national level, it is already automatically, it is, it is put in automated mode. And uh, so that is why the competition becomes more uh, uh, easier to approach. And uh, it is finally an automated, automatic, automatically one is tuned to the national level competitions like uh, CPAC, uh, medical exams, or JE or other uh, Karnataka state board, uh, Karnataka medical exams or engineering exams or even a CLAT. So those kind of things automatically happens because the peer demand is of that kind and the, the content also put forth uh, by the curriculum framework is also tuned to the national competitions. And I feel uh, CBSE and ICC has an edge in terms of continuity of the journey of the competitive exams. But it also means that a child who has appeared for CBC doesn't mean that he can't go to University of Illinois or he can't go to University of Singapore. Absolutely. They can. But only thing is that they need to process and the pragmatism has to be taken care Absolutely. of. Absolutely. But undoubtedly, I personally feel that national level, these national boards are also being fairly good. The only thing is that it is less child-centric in nature. And again, okay. I would like to put an alarm that child-centric, it depends upon the teacher who is teaching them. Whether the teacher is keeping the, the class teacher-centered or child-centered, it depends upon the approach and the magnanimity of the person who is in the center of that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subhash Kumar. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Bali, okay, I know... Uh, first, first my sincere apologies. I think we've been paying a little bit of identity. I just couldn't help it. Tried logging in from three devices. There seems to be something wrong, maybe because of the rains. Yes. Uh, probably the yeah, because of the rains, yes, ma'am. Because of the rains. So let's get started uh, before absolutely. you lose your 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. So I'll not take much time. I have already done your introduction, ma'am. And uh, once again, thank you for sparing your time and joining in despite a lot of uh, challenges which you are facing. But ma'am, I'll open with you since international education is your forte, it's your domain expertise. So now, ma'am, can you help us understanding, you know, as well as the audience who are attending this session, what are the key features which makes IB so unique and different from other boards, ma'am? I'll start with these points from you. Certainly, certainly. Uh, a lot of schools are opting for IB driven programs. IB essentially has three programs. PYP, which is for grades nursery to five, followed by MYP for grades six to 10. And then finally, the IB diploma. Now, there are some things that run across all three curricula. One, of course, is a wide range of subjects. If you look at the school living qualification, a wide range of subjects that students are given to pick up choices, you know. Uh, so children can pick up permutations and combinations, which seem very unique. <clears throat> for instance, if I were to talk about IB diploma, you could pick up music with physics. You could pick up history with the design and technology. So you can pick up permutations and combinations of subjects, giving you the fluidity, the flexibility, and the beauty of being able to study different subjects simultaneously. That's one. Second, there is no clear demarcation, particularly at plus two in the IB diploma. Unlike the national curriculum, there is no demarcation or compartmentalization into humanities, commerce, um, and uh, science. Now, see, children can continue to study a number of subjects, at least six subjects. They are expected to study six subjects from five groups. So when I say six subjects, <clears throat> three subjects are studied at the high level. Those subjects are essentially driven by what you want to pursue post school, three subjects at the standard level. In addition to these six subjects, you study three core components. Now, these three core components are extended essay, which is a dissertation of about 4,000 words, which is supposed to be original. And is done after a lot of research by the students. So an extended essay, followed by a, some, a subject called theory of knowledge. Now, theory of knowledge is a transdisciplinary subject. Again, the children are supposed to delve into different AOKs. AOKs are areas of knowledge helping them to make connections. So children study this transdisciplinary subject and they write a 1300 word essay at the end of year two. Finally, there is CAS, creativity, activity and service as the other gentleman was saying, a broad spectrum of social outreach programs that children can indulge in. Creativity, it could be dance, music, theater, anything, uh, art for that matter. So creativity, activity and service social service. So it's a very holistic program, if I may say so, compared to most other programs. It's a very holistic program, not merely catering to academic rigor. Of course, it is known for academic rigor, but it is also known for making students very versatile. That's two. Third, it helps children to think critically, to, to think beyond the textbooks, beyond grades, beyond the textbooks, to challenge assumptions. Because children are supposed to have a very strong voice. There's something, uh, you know, there's a term called student agency. When I say student agency, what I'm trying to say is that the, the learner must have a voice. However young the learner may be, the learner must have a voice. The, so the process is reversed. The dissemination of information is not from the teacher to the taught. It's the other way around. The taught, the student, the pupil is prodded to ferret out information, to research, look for information, draw conclusions, and then reflect on those conclusions and finally learn. So, you know, when we talk about learning how to learn, I think IB teaches the children to learn how to learn. The next thing is children start researching for information from a very young age. So they learn the skills of researching and referencing from a very, very young age. And academic honesty is an integral part of their learning. That is, you know, they're asked to research and look for information and then acknowledge the sources from where they get this information. So children, when they leave school, after their school leaving qualification, they have learned very well the art of referencing, researching and citing which are not skills that other curricula teach so well. So I think 
it's a very rich program. Uh, another very beautiful thing about IB is a strong learner profile. When I say a strong learner profile, there are 10 attributes which have been identified. Now, these attributes could be good communicators, communicators, risk takers, uh, principled. Similarly, seven other profiles, so learner profiles. Everything is driven by those learner profiles. That is, every time you do something, you sit down and reflect what is the learner profile I have imbibed by doing this task or learning this lesson. So reflection becomes a very important part of uh, the learning process. Uh, so I would say freedom, flexibility. Then I also mentioned that the program, particularly the IBDP is a very rigorous program. PYP, a very joyful program, joyous. Gives children a lot of um, freedom to think, uh, gives them the, the, uh, the length and breadth to express, to articulate, uh, to speak about their experiences, a very joyful program. Similarly, MYP, somewhat on the lines of PYP, somewhere between PYP and the diploma program. Definitely academic rigor is much higher than PYP. So also allows children to, uh, to, be, to express themselves in many ways, not only through a pen and paper exam to, to uh, children are not just assessed through pen and paper tests. They're also assessed through portfolios. They're assessed through presentations. Um, they're assessed to um, student-led conferences. So you have this whole gamut of uh, assessment tools which are used. Then a very strong integration of technology. And I think that's what sets the IB programs apart from the others is a strong integration of technology in teaching learning. So I think all these factors essentially give the freedom, the flexibility, and finally, I would say the ability to manage your time, uh, particularly when you're doing the IB diploma, because it's a tall order. Not merely are you supposed to study six subjects, you're supposed to clinch at least 24, a minimum of 24 on 45 points. You're supposed to complete your extended essay of 4,000 words, you know, words like plagiarism. The others in the other national curricula will probably not be taught these terms, academic honesty, plagiarism. You cannot plagiarize, you can't simply cut and paste. So plagiarism. So uh, these are not things which are taught in the other curricula. So as I said, it's a tall order. Uh, so extended essays, um, uh, 4,000 words, which has to be original after being researched on a topic of your choice associated with a subject that you may like. Uh, similarly, theory of knowledge uh, essay. And theory of knowledge classes, again, are, I would say, very, very vibrant um, classes which create which which uh, create an environment which is conducive to a lot of thinking and brainstorming um, and uh, an exchange of ideas back and forth between the the, the teacher and the taught. Um, so I would say that uh, you know that after the TOK um, essay, you're supposed to clock a certain number of hours also for CAS. So if you can't manage your time well, you're not going to be able to manage your diploma. So time management skills. So mm -hmm. essentially, when you have learned all this in your school years, I think you're much better prepared for university when you finally leave the portals of your alma mater. So I think that's what makes IB a very, very unique program to study, a very beautiful program to study. I mean, provided you're, you're willing to put in uh, the kind of diligence which is required by a program like this. I hope that somewhat answers your question, uh, Vivek. Certainly, ma'am. I think uh, uh, the popularity of IB uh, is gaining uh, day by day. I think recently Delhi government have uh, uh, signed up and they have signed up with the IB to yes to implement uh, the IB programs, IB driven programs in some of the government schools. And I do hope that uh, this should work well. It should work very well because uh, um, earlier I think that the the idea and thought was that the IB was meant only for the elite and a select few few and catered only to a niche group. Uh, but I think with this step, uh, things will start to look up. In the past also, there have been organizations which have uh, worked uh, with the IB programs, uh, you know, which were not very, um, which are cost effective and uh, they've done a neat job. So I think this is a great step forward, making it accessible to those who do not have the wherewithal 
uh, to pursue a program like this. I think that's a great step forward. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Ma'am, I'll have just, I have another extended, uh, you know, question pertaining to this uh, subject. Then I'll come to Dr. Subhash Kumar. Ma'am, uh, since, you know, this session is for the parents and they're attending, now always there's, there's a choice what a parent get looking for an IB, if they're decided on an IB curriculum, should they go, what are the advantage of enrolling in a continuum school IB, you know, or a, even a dual curriculum is okay. So is there any difference or, you know, gaps or any advantage or, you know, so in, in this subject, if you can just simplify and help the parents, right? Whether the continuum yeah. school will add advantage or if it, even if it's okay, it's fair enough, you know, even if it's not a continuum school, as long as the school uh, is uh, providing an international curriculum. Yeah. Vivek, essentially, uh, the concept of a continuum school in India is a fairly recent concept. All right. Some schools, I will say some select few schools have switched to continuum. However, there are older schools which are still continuing to follow. Uh, let us say the PYP in their primary years, grades nursery to five, uh, followed by uh, Cambridge Lower Secondary, then IGCSE and the IB Diploma Program. Now, when I talk about, let's look at it very objectively. If I talk about a continuum school, obviously the philosophy uh, which, which IB propagates, uh, it permeates right from uh, uh, bottom up you know, it right from PYP up to up to IB diploma program. Having said that, uh, there is this commonality. Uh, there is this common thread that runs across um, the three, uh, you know, uh, curricula. But but having said that, there are schools, as I said, like ours, for donkey's years, and the schools which have just switched to continuum also. Um, they had been running very successfully. All these schools had been running very successfully. A combination of uh, the IB and the Cambridge programs. And honestly speaking, if you ask, if you were to ask my personal opinion, I think the IGCSC with a two year program in grades nine and 10 prepares students very well for the IB diploma, for the rigor of the IB diploma. Because you are studying over two years, you study a program over two years and then you're tested at the end of year 10. So the rigor that is required in the IB diploma you have already acquired the ability to tackle that rigor, all right? And the transition has always been very, very smooth. Essentially, I think uh, at the end of the day, all international curricula, basically the, the trust is on critical thinking. The trust and uh, the emphasis is on critical thinking skills, uh, application and uh, application of knowledge, not rote learning. But I personally feel that the IGCSC prepares students very well for the rigor of the IB diploma because you are sitting through um, a public examination in the year 10, uh, which is preparing you very well for um, grades 11 and 12. But it pretty much depends on a school and school's philosophy. I think both look good to me, um, but because continuum, you follow the same thing throughout. Um, running an IGCSC or a Cambridge in the middle does not de detract from the efficacy of uh, uh, academic uh, work. It just does not detract from the efficacy of the academic work. And I, I am personally for more rigor. I sit for that public examination. You're not audible. Thank you, ma'am, for explaining this. I'll come to Dr. Shubhash Kumar, uh, sir. Uh, may I also, can you also highlight, you know, one point with does NEP 2020 will give an edge to the CBSC adding more value to the curriculum and bringing it closer to the international curriculum? So we, when we are talking about critical thinking or time management, like with the integration of NEP, what, what is your thought process? Do you think this is going to bring little closer, the CBSC will be a little closer to the uh, international curriculum? So, so unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, coming back to your question, Vivek. Uh, when you, we talk about the NEP, uh, as I was talking about, the tools of learning has been well floated in the new, new uh, education policy, where uh, the child's focus is on learning through doing, where the skill, skill learning is also very important focus after class six 
and the language, uh, the learning to the languages of the students, the lower level, uh, hand holding at the very lower level. So those things are definitely what the international curriculum talks about. As uh, you were just now, we were talking about even the members talking about the continuum school or the rigor of CIE. So basically, the new education policy is uh, the, the total mix of what we have seen in, in the broader approach in terms of the international curriculums where we have. Though, uh, as my, my madam was talking about the more rigor in the IGCC class 10. So in, uh, when we talk about the new education policy, there is a diametrically opposite, opposite situation. The focus is more on class 12. And uh, as uh, we are talking about the 10th class examination, the focus as of now is to the MCQ questions. So that kind of uh, unnecessary stress and the pressure has been uh, brought down so possibly, possibly two quick pressures of 10th and 12th class will help the students to be more focused in terms of magnanimous learning. And uh, what IB talks about, the IB learner profile, where you, you are more focused, where, where you are more, uh, you are a better communicator, you are more a better thinker. So the child, when less stress is there, he becomes a better and a more matured learner. Otherwise, we have seen that right now, we, people are also talking about the board in class 8, and board in class 5th. Uh, in the last two, three years, many states, they have gone in class five also, in class eight also. So what happens? It, it is more of a structure through a formula learning. And the formula learning doesn't allow you to widen your horizon and spread your wings. So new education policy will possibly, uh, which has taken the tools of learning from various places, because it has been prepared as a very beautiful document. The only thing is that how well we are going to implement and how far we are going to create a gap which we proposed in the earlier uh, uh, national curriculum framework that will help us to be a more realistic in approach. But I hope as an educationist that new education policy will definitely make a change because it is focusing child-centered learning. And as I, as I was talking about earlier also, children will be floated in the swimming pool of life. And there, how well you are going to have a different kind of strokes, uh, whether it's a backstroke or a free stroke or free style, mm -hmm. So that will depend upon the ultimate learning and what is the ultimate vision of the national curriculum framework and the national curriculum under the guidance of the NEP. More importantly, NEP has already started to train the teachers, but training of a teacher should be also very much equitable to what the IB talks about the teacher's training program. They have a very beautiful teacher's training program in IB. Where now a lot of IB workshops are happening in India. When we were IB teachers, we had to go to Singapore here and there for IB teachers training program. So teachers training program is the most important thing. It is should not be only a customary and through only a uh, subtle process to learn. So teachers should be more exposed to the tools of learning. Otherwise, we'll come to square one. Various new policy, education policy gaps in earlier years also like industrial policy in 1986 and 1956. So it has to be more pragmatic in approach and both teachers should be also in the center at the same time, children should also be centered and as an educationist, as a platform, how will we can expose for an ultimate uh, objective, the mission and the vision of NEP will help us to accumulate and assimilate the benefit. Okay, thank you, Dr. Subhash Kumar. Uh, Ma'am, I'm coming to you with uh, two points here. One is the perception and one is the myth. So the general perception about IB is the students who have completed the IBDP, they get a fair chance or better chance of getting into the world's leading university. Now, this is the perception. Now, how will you react to this? And on the other side, the second point, also this perception, or I should I say it's a myth, where IBDP students, students who have completed IBDP, for them, it's very difficult to get into competitive exams like civil services or, you know, JEE or maybe, you know, uh, 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 medical entrance exams, right? So, ma'am, these are the two aspects which directly concerns the parents community, because if they have decided on a career path, they want to understand how those career paths can be achieved by using different boards. So, ma'am, your reaction on both the points, ma'am. Right. All right. You spoke about uh, the IB students getting into some of the top tier universities or the Ivy League universities. You have a point there. I'll tell you why. Uh, something called HESA or Higher Education Statistic Agency uh, says that uh, students who enroll for the Ivy Diploma um, have a better chance of getting into the top 10 UK universities. 
Uh, similarly, they also say that uh, top 20 UK universities. And the same uh, survey, the same agency says that children who, who have done the IB diploma have a better chance of getting into the top 10 US colleges. I'll tell you why. Because they have, as I said, when I was speaking, uh, that uh, most students who have gone through the IB diploma program have already learned the skills that are needed to succeed in the universities, right? They have learned the skills of researching. They have learned the skills of referencing. They have learned the skills of citation. Uh, and they have also learned the academic rigor, which is required in the university. They're already accustomed to that. Majority of the students, majority of our children who go to, grade, to year one, in fact, I think year one is a cakewalk for them, right? So however, having said that, am I audible, Vivek? Yes. Um, Sorry. Yes, ma'am. That's also because of um, excellent quality control in IB. Um, every five years, there's a review of the program, and to continue to be accredited as a school that is offering the IB, IB diploma, you need to go through a five year review and you need to, they keep you on your toes, so to say. So that's one part of the question. They are more likely to succeed. Yes. Uh, number two, your next question was a lot of Indian parents who aspire to send their children into the civil services or the engineering programs, which are in India uh, or other competitive exams have this little apprehension at the back of their mind uh, that the children may not fare well. Now, my answer to that will be a lot of these competitive exams are, are conducted by CBSC, Correct. right? But the fact of the matter is that if you wish to appear for a NEET or, an, or, an, or a JE, or for any of these competitive exams, most children take at least one year's preparation. They take time to prepare for one year. True. So whether you're a student of IB or you're a student of CBAC, you're going to take that one year if you really wish to succeed. Is that right? Absolutely. So therefore, I would say, um, excuse me. So I would say that uh, having said that, um, you are going to take that one year. Mm. So whether you're studying CBSC or IB or Cambridge or whatever, you are going to take that one year to prepare thoroughly. That's two. Uh, three, I personally feel that, uh, pardon my saying so, I have, I have headed large CBSC schools also, but the emphasis is more on rote learning. Um, and I've taught CBSC for a good 18 years as a classroom teacher, so I know that the emphasis is more on rote learning and less on um, analytical skills or application skills. Now, those are skills which are taught in IB, not so much in CBSC, right? So there, I think the children who are doing the IB diploma have an advantage. And IB students are not debarred from taking any of these exams. IB is a board which is at par and perhaps even considered superior by some, um, you know, in terms of rigor. Um, so, I think the parents can rest assured. It, it really doesn't interfere with that. That's very assuring, ma'am. Thank you so much for clarifying. Uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar, uh, may I request you, you know, in case if you want to add some points, but I want to have uh, put across, you know, one more point. Generally, you know, parents are mostly concerned about that after finishing IBDP, getting into a Indian colleges also, at times, you know, they find it to be difficult because there's an issue of equivalency. And, you know, so, so can you throw some light on that? And so that parents are very well aligned in a short, whatever is the fact of the matter is. Uh, see, Vivek, uh, as you rightly said, the equivalency is being, uh, certificate has to be provided for admissions in various universities. And uh, the, the way the marks uh, the students are getting in uh, CBSE and ICAC and other state courses, what happens, uh, though the equivalency is there, but the, the cutthroat is very high for marks in the universities. So generally, the students from CBSC and ICSC and state books, they get universities like Delhi University, but I'm not saying that the IB students are not getting there. But you will see more number of CBSC and ICSC students because of the process of assessment and the, the numeric value which talks about the exams like CBSC and ICSC. But I still, I'll tell you that a child getting a, a very good grade in IB will, has a definitely an upper age of a very bright students of CBSC. So there's no comparison there. But uh, definitely, people, those who are taking admissions abroad, IB students, have a better chance. 
And similarly, as I was talking earlier, also it's not it's a bit that uh, a CBC student will not get admission abroad. The only thing is that IB students will get a credit, no doubt about that. So, and similarly, the, the uh, national boards like CBAC and ICAC, they have a little upper edge in admissions in the Indian universities because many of the universities uh, definitely take IB students because they have an admission process to on the marks basis and they also have a personal viva system also. So, international curriculum students, they are very well exposed to reasoning, thought process, communications, research-based learning, and, and they know what is the child-centric learning. So, they fare well in the viva voce. But if, where the admissions where it only happens by numeric value, like Delhi University and others, where 99% uh, is also very less for getting admissions in the first list of science students and other colleges. So, there, there is a little, uh, the international curriculum students, barring few toppers, they get a, a space there. But uh, undoubtedly, they fare very well in various private universities. You'll find a Soka University or a Flame University, they do and take admissions. But uh, coming back to once again, I would like to break the myth that uh, whether it is an ICC student or an IP student, a student per se, how well he has perceived and acknowledged and acclaimed, that makes a difference to me. Certainly, sir. I think uh, even uh, uh, that goes without saying. It depends on the students uh, about uh, his preparedness or her preparedness. And uh, uh, that here, decides... Here I would like to add one more point. Uh, see, Nita Mapp was very rightly saying that a child requires one year for preparation after doing his plus two admissions. No doubt about that. And uh, uh, there are a lot of students in India. The trend is that they start preparation of their uh, uh, JE and uh, PMT and all those exams right from in 11th class only. So they don't go for a gap year. And uh, definitely a lot of students in Basel curriculum also, they take a gap year. So they sacrifice their 11th class and 12th class uh, of direct classroom uh, transaction the way that it is happening in the class. They may be attending the school, I'm not saying that. But they are tuned to their own system of learning also. So possibly they don't have to wait for one year. But those who are waiting for one more year, I, even IB students uh, can wait for one year, year and prepare. At the same time, in 11th class and 12th class also, they can find a time for themselves and they can tune yeah. to the process of learning what CBC students are. Absolutely. So it's not, it's not a matter of time, but it's, they can certainly uh, take it forward. Right. So ma'am, again, you know, coming uh, back to uh, the parents' perspective. Uh, so one last question which I have is, generally, you know, what we have seen during our premier schools exhibition, parents at the pre-nursery level, right? They are deciding on a school on the basis of the board, right? So first thing, this is just, I feel it's a right, it's, is it a right approach to analyze, to decide, you know, or not, or they should be free to, you know, uh, take any suitable school irrespective of the board in such a scenario at what level they should consider the board, right, ma'am? So ma'am, I'll start, uh, can you please answer this? And then uh, I'll take the reaction from Dr. Shubhash Kumar as well, ma'am. Uh, we were speaking about the pre-primary. You said whether we should take into consideration the board. Is board. that right? Yes, That was your question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, I would say uh, yes and no. Uh, ideally, when you are going into uh, um, primary class, um, what you really need to look for, um, you know, if you look at perspective, we don't really need to look for a board per se. You have to choose a system which allows children to think freely, uh, allows them for free play, does not encourage vote learning, um, makes learning a joyful experience. But definitely, you know, you, you want to take the second thing. Should a parent look at a board because um, if I were to talk about, let's say, primary years, um, I think we lost uh, uh, the connection of uh, Dr. Bali. Mm. Dr. Shubhash Kumar, may I, I request can hear you? you? I don't okay, you can hear me, ma'am. Okay, but your your uh, voice dropped. Can you I please, can. Uh, you know? Uh, Start from wherever you know. Yeah. Let me stop. I, I'll find up. Yeah, where I left. Uh, so as I said, um, 
to some extent, yes, the board matters because philosophy of a particular board will be reflected even in the primary, uh, in the pre-primary classes. Absolutely. Uh, so in that sense, the board really matters because if I'm going to get my child to pursue PYP, the thought process will be very different from, let's say, a Montessori um, or any other uh, style of uh, pre-primary. So there, I think uh, uh, it's good to go uh, from the beginning with the board uh, that your child is likely to pursue in the later years. In that sense, So in that sense, uh, in that sense, it make uh, uh, a value proposition for the parents, you know, so that the switching over schools will not be required. So once for all, the school, the, the child will be yes. admitted in pre-primary, yeah, yes. in, for a PYP program, and then the child. Can and beginning, the child is uh, attuned to a certain way of uh, teaching learning. So the attunement also takes time. And then attunement, after attunement, then you're, you, you get used to a certain style of teaching learning. And see, teaching, um, learning is, uh, is an evolving process. It's not something that, um, you know, can be confined only to one class. It's cumulative. So if it's cumulative, whatever you learn, let's say in pre-primary, you'll carry it forward to um, nursery and KG, further grade one, two, three, four, and five. So learning is always cumulative. So in that sense, I think the board becomes an but all said and done, what really matters is the learning has to be very joyful in pre-primary. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for clarifying this. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar, would you like to add? Because I have one more last question. Again, you know, it's from the parent side. So generally, there's a perception or, you know, people find that IB board is, is quite expensive. Now, now, why it's expensive? There must be some kind of justification, you know, which is which must be there. If, you know, if both of you, if you can highlight on that point, if IB is expensive, why it's expensive? So that at least parent will get the right uh, you know, uh, value uh, of understanding from this part. So, Vivek, you want me to answer this question? Should yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You can. Uh, uh, please continue. Post that uh, once we'll get the line of Dr. Bali, we will take uh, Dr. Bali's reaction as well. Yes. See, IB schools uh, are costlier. The reason is that uh, the training of IB is costly, no doubt about that. The affiliation fees of IB is very high. Examination fees of IB is very high. And the teacher's uh, salary and all those things, uh, it is higher than the national curriculum schools because there are uh, a lot of experienced teachers also stay for a longer period of time in the national exposure. So the salary uh, is, is much, much higher in international curriculum schools. So the input which we are talking about it should match out. So unless and until uh, the teachers are paid well, you cannot expect, uh, you can uh, uh, think of having a proper transaction of the curriculum of IB. So to do justify that, uh, the process of uh, training, the teachers of recruitment, the consistency of teaching process, uh, people staying for a longer period of time in the same curriculum. So th that is why the IB teaching program, whether you talk about IB, you talk about MYP or you talk about diploma programs, it is costlier than uh, the national boards because national board, uh, the, the affiliation fees is not high and that examination fees is not so high. Teachers training program is also uh, very, very reasonable. And uh, the salary part also it doesn't match with what uh, the IB curriculum teachers are getting in national curriculums. So that is the reason why IB has a, uh, IB is understood to be expensive uh, process of learning. Thank you, Dr. Shabash. Uh, Ma'am, would you like to uh, add uh, on this uh, question? Would you like to add something, Ma'am, on this Thank question? Though um, um, he's already spoken so beautifully about uh, why IB is an extensive program. One, Avivek, there is an annual fees which every school is supposed to pay the IB for every program they run. So that annual fees is mandatory. Mm -hmm. And the schools, of course, uh, have to pay that fees in, to be able to run the I think there's some connection problem. Uh, Dr. Subhash, uh, can you see the questions on the right panel, on the chat panel? 
right there's some questions we have got uh, uh, from the audience yeah. uh, so uh, yes ma'am so ma'am please continue the annual fees hmm. uh, that, are you able to hear me yes ma'am now we can hear you please continue yeah. annual fees and uh, there is very stringent quality control so um, all teachers of ib are expected to go through trainings in order to meet the mandate of the five year review so the costly trainings add to the cost of the program so at the end of the day uh, the Hello. We lost you uh, last last two sentences. Uh, we could not hear, ma'am. Uh, can... yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you now. Yeah. And the uh, uh, the connection really bad. Uh, Vivek, for some strange reasons. <laughs> I know because I've done. Uh, we have done so many sessions. I think this is the first time. Uh, maybe because of the rains, you're finding uh, a little difficulty. I'm. We've I, done three number seminars together, but this is never. <clears throat> yes ma'am So Dr Subhash Kumar I'll just take a quick Hello? question yeah, yes ma'am I I I now we have got your line uh, we can hear you Just Ma'am, I'm I'm moving on to the next question, which is got from the speaker on the chat panel. So this is Geetika. She has written: Is ICSC too difficult to manage? How different is it from CBSE? So, Bajji, in brief, if you can just uh, throw some light, because we are we have overshooted our time, but we still we can take three four questions of the audience and then wrap the session. See, uh, <laughs> it is a very good question to be answered, because I was an ICSE student. Uh, Vivek. Okay. Okay. See? Yes. Uh, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Just. Just a second. Yeah, we can hear uh, you. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can hear. We can. Yeah, we so can hear you. Go it's ahead. It's a very wise question to answer. Uh, for my aspect, wise not for everybody, for but for me, it is uh, advisable to answer this question in the most fitting way to my understanding. I was an ICC student, and I was an IC CBC teacher throughout. I have never taught in ICC, but I was a student of ICC, and I can understand that the student understand. Much much better better the verticals and the horizontal study. Uh, what I, I where I it has to be a comparative study in between CBSE and ICSE. Uh, ICSE uh, the the time when I studied and now also I feel that uh, the prime focus uh, is on basically the language, uh, the English language, the way it is being taught in ICSE. It is much much better and it is uh, not only the communications will which, which is being developed in CBSE. the literary skill is also taken care of uh, in the uh, in icsc where in class 10th and 9th you teach drama of shakespeare you talk, you talk about uh, the various prose and uh, the various uh, critical application of a poem a rhyme scheme so i feel icsc in terms of languages it is very very nice and even in science and mathematics uh, they have taken in the, uh, the higher level of learning also they have brought very very well in the class 9th and 10th also where like uh, Uh, we talk about when i was studying in icsc a lot of things were there which was in class 11 and 12 like uh, binomial theorem of permutations combinations and factorials and all those things so and more of a practical based learning is also in the in icsc the reason is that ibs icsc is also a, a process which is the post effect of cambridge learning which i was talking about icsc was primarily earlier it was cambridge and then with cambridge went from india it, it was no more in india then ICSC board was being founded by Jesuit Society. It was founded in Delhi, and uh, they have done a fairly good job. But in terms of uh, mathematics and science, as I told you, it is more of uh, the thing which is found in class uh, ninth and tenth is more of a basic in approach where a child has not to study science and mathematics at the higher level. Also, they study class ninth and tenth, and they have a fairly good knowledge of basic mathematics and general science. but there is a quantum jump from class 10 mathematics and science curriculum in class 11 so i find there is a gap in cbse in terms of uh, 
the continuum of learning from class 10 to 12. But ICSE, I feel uh, there's no such gap in ICSE curriculum. And now ICSE curriculum has also been devised recently. Uh, so ICSE stands a very uh, progressive curriculum. At the same time, uh, it is well justified in terms of learning. It. I can compare ICSE with the national, international course also. With a little addition and exposure of teachers, ICSE can be a very good board in terms of uh, matching with what uh, CIE and IB talks about. But separately, IB and and uh, CIE has a much uh, 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 a higher advantage because the research base is uh, throughout the country. The, the case study is throughout the world. So it has a broader and a, a valid platform to take care of. But ICAC is also a good board, and I feel that the students studying ICAC do they fare well in our country as well. So Thank I you. Very I have to answer the question. Any other part which I missed, you can uh, put a tail in the question, I can still answer. Okay, I, I'll just take uh, questions, now I'm taking the questions of the uh, audience. Ma'am, uh, this is I think for you, uh, one person is asking, is it possible to take three science subject, biology, physics, chemistry for my IBDP? Because she's saying, uh, he or she's saying that I came across the information that students have to opt one subject from each six GP. Ma'am, can you throw some light yes, on this? Yes, most certainly. Uh, you can definitely take three sciences and the diploma that you would be doing will be called an irregular diploma. However, the word irregular need not alarm you. Essentially, you have to take one subject from each uh, band and one additional subject, but you can take all three sciences for which the diploma coordinator or the school head has to take permission from the IB. And please don't get waylaid. I mean, don't get alarmed by this term irregular diploma. That doesn't in any way make your diploma any lesser than the other the diploma holders. It only makes it more rigorous. So don't worry, you can take all three sciences. Uh, one more question is there uh, from Palak. My child wants to go for IBDP and further, he wants to appear for civil services exams in India. Will IB curriculum help him to achieve his aspirations? <laughs> Most certainly, IB curriculum will help your child to achieve more than his aspirations for different reasons that I mentioned. Don't imagine I'm biased, as I said initially, and I'm repeating, I've headed large uh, uh, CBSE schools as well. Uh, but as an educator, looking at things very objectively, I think majority, majority uh, of the IB students are uh, more articulate, they're thinkers, they're able to analyze better, their application skills are better. Um, and I think they're better equipped uh, with higher order thinking skills, uh, with all due deference to CBSE, which is again a great curriculum. All right. So, um, and of course, uh, if in terms of rigor, it is the most rigorous program. And preparation for civil services is definitely known to be very rigorous. If you're used to that kind of academic rigor, you will fare well, period. Wonderful, wonderful, ma'am. Ma'am, this is the last question and I'll, I'll uh, request Dr. Subhash Kumar to answer this. This is from Cynthia. So is it true that CBSC curriculum gives an edge to students who are aiming JE and NEET? Hmm? So this answer is a little obvious. Okay, so no marks for you. Okay, <laughs> you can answer this, sir. <laughs> uh, see, as I, I will just come, come back once again, uh, as what uh, earlier we were discussing. Definitely when we talk about CBSC, the content, part is definitely matching with the CBC curriculum. But at the same time, the orientation of the student should also be for that purpose. To, to write a CBC exam is different and to write a competitive exam is different. So you have to have a judicious mixture of both. You want to fare well in CBC exams also, and you also want to fare well in the competitive exams also. Uh, but orientation is very, very important. Otherwise, I have seen students, they are prepared very, very well for competitive exams, and they don't fare well in CBC exams. So there, the hiatus is being developed. You are getting 60 for 50 percent marks in your uh, CBC exam, but you don't qualify for exams where 75 percent is the requirement. So you have to have a, equate yourself where you prepare very well for competitive exams, and the content will definitely help you. At the same time, you need to have a justifiable stand where you are also preparing for competitive exams, and you are also preparing to write the exam the way CBC demands. So the orientation of the students. What it is of the parents, expectations of the students, expectations of society, and the parents should be on, in the right position. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subhash Kumar. Ma'am, I think we are now absolutely at the last part of this session. I'll request to give a piece of advice to parents or maybe a closing remarks for the parents community in terms of understanding and how they should look at boards and just, uh, you know, plan their child's career. From uh, Start with, uh, ma'am, you can uh, first uh, put your remarks and then I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly, certainly. Uh, I personally feel that every parent um, should research thoroughly, research thoroughly and find out what are the different curricula about, because each curricula will have its own characteristics and uh, manner of transacting. So please go ahead, research thoroughly, speak to educators who are teaching the different programs, speak to parents whose children are going to different schools that are transacting different programs. And be very clear in your head, what is it that you want to prepare your child for? However, having said that, I think um, as children move on in their educational journey and as you grow older, uh, you will find that there are, I find that a lot of parents, I have a lot of parents who have moved from CBSC to IB in grade, um, various grades and particularly after grade 10. And strangely, these children who have done grade 10 CBSC have really succeeded um, and done very well in IB. And some have even emerged as stoppers. But having said that, please follow a research method, read up, research, talk, seek advice, speak to educators, speak to your uh, friends, uh, other people in the family whose children may be going to different schools. Uh, also talk to children to find out, ask questions. You will know how children express themselves. You will know immediately because I, I don't think there is there is any other uh, way to, um, uh, what shall I say, um, you know, there's any other way to figure out, except the fact that, um, you know, when you talk with children and talk about the curriculum that they're studying, children should be able to give you first-hand feedback. You'll know immediately. In fact, when a lot of our parents come to school for admissions, I uh, generally tell the admissions team, rather than you're escorting, why don't we send the kid? Let them have a conversation with the children. So they, they'd find out what are the kids about. The schools are about the children and their learning. Absolutely. The schools are not about walls and infrastructure. The schools are really about children and the learning and their attitudes uh, that they reflect um, and, and uh, their behavior, their mannerisms, their demeanor. So I think mm -hmm. uh, talk to kids. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar, can you please uh, present your closing remarks? Yes, I'm thankful to Nita, ma'am. She has uh, talked a lot about uh, various things. I'll talk about very few things. Uh, I, I feel that we should uh, create a, a proper divide in the school and home. Let home be a home. Where when a child comes to home, all the time we should not talk about studies and what you have done in the school, homework has been completed or not. I personally feel there is a hiatus in the process of the way we emulsify. Uh, when a child comes to home, he should feel that he is at home. At the same time, we should also talk about our past. Uh, we, we should allow the, to talk to the grandparents. We should uh, talk together. Uh, uh, so I feel basically there should be less. Don't create another school. Otherwise, what happens? The child, they are toxified. They feel claustrophobic. They are uh, suffocated. And at that time, that creates a pressure in the child. So how we can create a joyful home, and as a school head, how I can create a joyful school, that will reflect in the child's outcome. And that is a Herculean task, I tell you. As the head of a family, how I can create a joyful family. As a head of the school, how can I can create a joyful school? So there should be a judicious mix, and let home be a home, where we talk about values, we talk about ethos, we talk about ethics, we talk about morality. When a child comes at home, there also we start talking about uh, TOK and all those kind of things. Definitely, TOK is at home. No doubt about that. When we talk about epistemology, philosophy, the TOK goes from home only to the school. Mm. But there should be the way I approach TOK in the school and TOK at home. TOK should be the little bit misspelled is home. It should be T A L K talk, and there should be TOK theory of knowledge. Uh -huh. So uh, proper assimilation to create a home and in the school a home away from home that makes a difference. So I feel Absolutely. as a parent, I am also a parent of two children. This is what I have tried being an educationist. That I seldom talk to my children about what are you studying, how you are studying. There are a lot of people to ask about. That. And there are very few people who can talk about the children, about my father, my grandmother, my stories of life, 
my failures, my successes. Those are real epistemology. Those are real extended days of life, which IB talks about right now. Thank you, Dr. Subhash Kumar. I really like, you know, one uh, sentence I'll pick and maybe I'll use it uh, in my next session with your permission for sure. T-O-K in class and T-A-L-K at home. <laughs> this is a good one. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so we are closing the sessions. Uh, uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar and Dr. Bali, uh, special thanks to both of you for sparing your time. And uh, Dr. Bali, I think despite a lot of uh, uh, technical issues and the internet issues at your place due to rains, still you have managed very patiently all throughout the session. I'm really, very grateful and thankful, thankful to you and to Dr. Subhash Kumar. So, and my dear parents, you're the last but not the least. You're the most important, you know, uh, stakeholder when we're talking about the school education at large, right? Your child is at the center, but you are an equal and important stakeholders. Now, the first best thing what you have done coming and attending this session, I think this is the first part, the first step which you have taken. But this confusion will be there. This is very, very natural. Please visit your nearest school. If you want to know more about uh, IB, visit uh, Jiri Goenka World School. Uh, go and meet, uh, for uh, attend the orientation program, which uh, uh, Jiri Goenka conducts very often uh, online as well as, as well as offline. You may also you know, visit some of the progressive schools. So I think the more you interact with the school communi community, uh, visiting schools, you'll be able, be able to gather a lot of relevant information. I think as a parent, if we are not updated, I think that's the worst thing uh, you know, on our side because end of the day is the most important decision we are making choosing the right school for the most important person in our life, which are children. So with this note, my humble submission to all the parents, uh, you know, to explore Premier Schools exhibition and keep visiting uh, the local schools, your neighborhood schools, and uh, keep yourself updated. Dr. Bali, uh, Dr. Subhash Kumar will certainly be available, you know, in case if you have any more questions which we are unable to attend, please write to us, go to the parents section, in uh, our uh, platform, there's a parent help desk. Put the questions there so that we can pass to Dr. Neeta Bali and Dr. Subhash Kumar so that the appropriate response may also reach to you very shortly. Right? Thank you so much once again, ma'am, Dr. Bali, Thank Dr. You. Subhash Thank Kumar. You so it's always great pleasure having both of you at our session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.